Welcome back to uh, the Basketball Temple. I am Ken, and this is episode two. Uh, again, to review real quick, episode one, we went over the scoreboard app uh, displayed here. Um, and we showed you how to control the scoreboard with uh, the pretty intuitive and pretty straightforward touch, touch-based interface. Everything is either tap or swipe control. Now, uh, in this episode, we want to introduce you to uh, a very convenient app, uh, which we call the BT Controller app, which you can use to uh, remotely control, you know, whether you have a scoreboard, a shot clock, let's say whether you have 10 scoreboards, you can synchronize it all to this uh, free, free BT Controller app, uh, complimentary uh, by us on the App Store and Play Store. So. Uh, in this episode, we're going to give you a quick little tutorial how to use the BT controller app. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so if you look in the top left corner of the BT controller app, you'll see a connect button or a connect icon. Uh, just click that and it will open up a menu where it will automatically uh, detect your devices on the network. Uh, depending on whether you're using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, uh, by default, uh, all your devices uh, usually should have your Bluetooth on, so it should detect your devices by Bluetooth at the very least. Now, uh, if your devices are all on the same Wi-Fi network, then it will detect your devices um, over Wi-Fi. Uh, so depending on whether it was discovered over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you'll either see a Wi-Fi button or a Bluetooth button or both. Uh, under the case where you have both icons, you can choose whether you want to connect by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So let's connect those. Let's uh, click those icons to connect. Um, once connected, the icons should turn green. And under the case that uh, for some reason uh, the devices do not connect up, then pretty much the simplest thing to do is just restart the app. And usually on the second try. Uh, it should work. All right, so closing that menu. All right. And now it's connected. You should see that the, the top right icon or top left icon should now be green, uh, indicating that the device is connected. Uh, on your other devices, if you look in the top left corner, these icons should also be green, uh, indicating that it is connected to the the remote. So we'll just get started by clicking start on the remote. So once you click start, it's just gonna simply go to the pre-game time on all of my devices. As you can see, they're all synchronized. Um, and for now, let's just early exit. So click start again to early exit. Again, all the devices are synchronized and let's start the period. Start it. Uh, shot clocks synchronized. Uh, let's play with the shot clock a little bit. Reset the shot clock. Synchronized. Uh, go. Synchronized. Let's say we want to reset it to a 14 second shot clock. Reset. 14 seconds and go. And there it goes. And let's just let it run down to a shot clock violation just so we can, uh, just for fun, see uh, the interface during that shot clock violation. And there you go, shot clock violation. My shot clocks will show a top red bar, uh, top red bar and my scoreboard, same thing, top red bar. Similar to, you know, the backboards in the NBA or even professionally overseas, uh, high school, uh, you'll see shot clock violations with the red top bar and the numbers will turn red uh, also to uh, conveniently uh, during a fast-paced game, conveniently uh, indicate to the ref that, hey, shot clock violation occurred. Yeah. All right, so, um, let's see, what else can we do? Uh, we could do the score. So again, we showed that in the previous episode, but now we're doing it on the controller. So when we change the score, it's gonna, it's gonna update the score on the the scoreboard. So let's just click start to uh, reset the shot clock, uh, remove the violation. 
And um, let's see what else we can uh, show you here. Uh, reset, let's freeze the shot clock for now. Um, again, timeouts will, again, synchronize to all devices. Uh, timeout time, and then under there, there should be the, the uh, what do you call it? The game time and the shot clock time left. Uh, again, for your coach to uh, drop a play, depending on uh, how much time is left. And um, yeah, so uh, again, if you want to exit the timeout early, just press uh, the start button, or not start button, but if you're working with the, the interface directly, then just tap the, the timer, the timer directly. So that's that's the thing about the. Let's talk about that for a second. That's the thing about the the controller app is there's actually two ways to use it. Uh, you got these this bottom panel. Uh, where there are buttons uh, conveniently labeled to tell you exactly what the action is doing. Um, but again, kind of similar to the scoreboard, you can tap directly on the, the time, the timers, and it will be pretty intuitive what it's doing. You tap on the score, the score is going to increase. Tap on the time, it's going to go. Tap on it, it's going to pause. So you have two options, uh, depending on which interface you prefer. Uh, for me, I kind of like the buttons, you know, because you know you can just sit there relaxed, one hand, uh, and everything is just uh, conveniently uh, in the right location uh, for your thumb. So, um, yeah, um, let's see what else we can talk about here for the controller app. Um, let's go to the settings again, real quick. So, uh, if you scroll down, you can um, hit exit game that will exit the current game. It will reset all the times. And let's, let's take a look real quick again at the settings. Click the settings icon on the top right. Uh, again, here's all the summaries of the game settings, pre-game time, eight minutes, uh, period time, 10 minutes, and uh, whatnot. Um, hit the edit settings button to go into the settings menu. And here, again, you have a flurry of things, a flurry of things you can uh, you can uh, edit. Um, many things. Uh, should we go through them? Pre-game time, uh, period times, shot clock times, uh, period rest times, overtime time. Uh, go to timeouts tab. You can set out uh, how much time is in a timeout. If you know, if you have a short timeout, how much time is in a short timeout. Uh, you can set how many timeouts are in the, in the first half, how many you get in the second half, whether the timeouts carry over between halves, and whatnot. It's fully customizable. Um, going to the Fouls tab, um, you can keep track of uh, whether you want the, the apps to uh, automatically uh, keep track of your foul management. For example, uh, let's say you have five fouls, then you're in the bonus situation uh, for FIBA rules, for example. Then on the scoreboard, uh, then the, the numbers will conveniently turn red for you. So you can know if a team is in uh, the bonus or not. Uh, also, you have double bonus situation for rule sets that uh, have it. And um, let's go to the miscellaneous tab, finally. Um, let's see here. So miscellaneous tab has uh, some convenient features uh, for, let's say, running practices, for example. Um, for example, in a practice, you don't want to, like, say you're a coach, you don't want to have to keep on going to the device, controlling it, uh, and also focusing on teaching your, your players. So you want to be able to just set it once at the beginning of practice and forget about it. And the, the useful thing about practice settings is you can turn on this setting called the uh, auto transition period times. If that is yes, then uh, let's say the period end is going to automatically transition uh, to the rest period. When the rest period ends, it's going to automatically transition to the next period. Now, if that was not turned on uh, at the end of the period, you would have to manually press the start button to go into the rest period or manually press the start button to go into the next period. 
So this is a very useful, uh, useful feature for uh, if you're running practices and you're, you're, you're kind of short on hands and it's just you, the coach, and uh, maybe the players and you don't have an assistant to help you uh, run the clock for you. Um, you have a thing called auto reset shot clock uh, where again, you know, in a practice you might not have time to be uh, resetting the shot clock all the time manually. So just to get a feel for how much time is in the shot clock when you're running plays or uh, just in general, you can have a thing called auto reset shot clock where it's just a rolling shot clock. The shot clock goes to zero, then it's gonna reset by itself back to 24 and then it's gonna start again automatically for you. Uh, also very useful for practice. Um, finally, you have a thing called running clock. So for example, if you play in uh, recreational leagues or uh, let's say some amateur leagues, a lot of times, you know, they're running many games a day. They wanna save time. So they have a thing called running clock. Uh, for example, let's say, um, let's say there's a shot clock violation. Time's not gonna stop. It's gonna continue, continue to roll. Uh, let's say, um, ball out of bounds, of course, you're not gonna press the pause button. It's gonna, time's gonna keep on rolling. So mainly, uh, running, sh running clock is when a uh, shot clock violation happens, clock will continue to roll instead of uh, stop. Okay, so, uh, and then what else is here? You got a thing called warning signal audio. For example, uh, let's say pregame time, let's say two minutes left, you want a little uh, warning signal then you can set that here. Same with timeouts. If there's 15 seconds left in the timeout, you can uh, add a warning signal and uh, whatnot. So you can see this, this, uh, this series of apps um, designed very specifically for, for basketball, running basketball games, basketball leagues, uh, running basketball practices. Um, we are a basketball company, so we, we developed this uh, for our own needs and of course you know what helps us is probably or could could I would say I wouldn't say would probably but it could help you uh, in the same way that it helps us so um, yeah but well, please uh, download the apps on the App Store or Play Store uh, runs on both Android and uh, iOS and um, thank you very much I hope the apps help you